in my first video on friction i gave an introduction to friction as to how it is caused and the various types of friction right uh, in this video i'm going to talk about laws of friction uh, we'll begin uh, with the first law and the first law says fs is proportional to r where fs fs is the maximum static friction null force right which we also defined as or called limiting friction right uh, just for your reference right i'll draw that graph again over here right we we got a graph like this right something like this right? where this on this surface we had frictional force and on this we had the applied force right applied force and this particular value this is fs right the maximum static frictional force or limiting friction right now in this video whenever i talk about frictional force i'll mean the static friction the limiting friction right not the values of frictional force which keep on changing as we go along this graph so that is one thing that you may want to remember that frictional force in this particular video means the maximum static frictional force or limiting friction right so the first law says fs is proportional to r where r stands for r is the normal reaction normal reaction now this is very simple to understand uh, let us take an example uh, let me take an example let us say we have a block of wood again lying on this particular surface and the weight of the object is acting in the downward direction the normal reaction would act over here now what the first law says is that the friction the maximum static frictional force between this particular block and the surface on which it is lying is proportional to the normal reaction r as the normal reaction increases the frictional force would increase and that is quite understandable in uh, understandable in some ways uh, what the law says is that as the weight the downward force increases right the frictional force is going to increase but you would have noticed that here we are not saying weight we are saying normal reaction because weight and normal reaction can be different in this case they are equal but if you take an example of an inclined plane for example an inclined plane and if the object is lying the same block is lying over here the weight would act in downward direction but the normal reaction would act at an angle and therefore its value would be different from the value of weight hence let us make uh, let's get one thing clear that weight and normal reaction are two different things this is a special case where both of them are equal but we will have a large number of situations wherein the weight and normal reaction will be different okay so first law is frictional force is proportional to normal reaction two the second law says that fs acts in a direction opposite to motion right again this is very very easy to understand what it says is that if you have a surface on which the block is moving for a, let us assume that this block is moving right if the block is moving in this particular direction let me show it over here right if the, let us say this block is moving in this direction then the frictional force will act in this direction so friction always opposes the motion which we know by intuition right so this is the second law which says that frictional force acts in a direction opposite to motion law number 3 says that fs is independent of the area of contact now this is a very interesting law what it says is that if you have well, supposing you have got a surface a table surface over here like this right and you have a block of wood over here for example you have a block of wood which is lying over here right and let us say this has got a weight of or normal reaction of w of say for example 50 newton right and this would have a certain amount of area in contact with this table now if i convert this block or if i have another block right which has the same weight right something like this something like this this also has a weight of let us say of 50 newton right the height decreases here the height was more here the height decreases in such a way that the weight is same 50 newton right in this case the area of contact increases right in this now what the law says is that the frictional force between the block and the table surface in this case and in this case is equal it is independent of the area of contact frictional force only depends upon normal reaction and as you can see over here the normal reaction is same 50 newton in this case and 50 newton in this case so the frictional force is decided by the normal reaction not by the area of contact even if the area of contact increases or decreases frictional force does not change a very important law to understand 
third law and the fourth and the final law it says that uh, the frictional force depends on the nature of surface in contact nature of surfaces in contact right okay so here we have this block of wood and this table uh, let us say the table is also made up of wood so we have got wood and wood over so these are the two surfaces in contact the table could be of uh, maybe of iron and then we would have wood and iron so it depends upon the nature of con nature of surfaces in contact so one it depends upon the material right whether it is wood to wood or wood to iron or wood to plastic or plastic to iron whatever so that combination of material uh, frictional force would depend upon that one two it would depend upon uh, whether the surface is polished or not polished or I, if i can use the word unpolished so it would depend upon whether the surface if the surface is polished then we expect the frictional force to decrease and if it is unpolished then we think that the surface the frictional force would be more of course uh, in a in a video later on we will discuss that uh, that may not be true right there are cases when we you know when we polish a surface beyond a certain extent the frictional force increases but for the time being we try to understand that the frictional force depends upon whether the surface is polished or unpolished Uh, it would also depend upon the surface is wet or dry and as you would have guessed wet surface friction would be less dry surface we expect friction to be more and uh, maybe uh, lastly whether it is smooth or rough right so again smooth friction we expect to be to be lesser and rough we expect the friction to be more so friction also depends upon the nature of surfaces okay these are the four laws of friction we have discussed all four of them right <clears throat> keep in mind that frictional force depends upon the normal reaction and it is independent of the area of contact this is quite understandable it acts opposite direction of motion and finally it would depend upon the nature of surfaces in contact the material and the nature of surface whether it's polished unpolished wet or dry smooth or rough fine with this uh, i have uh, completed this video on laws of friction right uh, see you in the next video thank you